Today, we heard from a lot of health organisations raising their concerns. What is the extent of the problem of obesity and alcohol abuse among young people in Europe? I'm very concerned because uh, one on three children aged six to nine are obese in the European Union. So uh, every year it's, uh, it grows bigger and bigger. So we, I think this is a problem, uh, an urgent one, as also the alcohol and the alcohol uh, amongst children and young people. So this is uh, an opportunity for us to move things further, to protect children and young people from advertising, because uh, they are very related. Advertising and obesity, uh, advertising during children's program on uh, unhealthy foods, advertising on alcohol, uh, on uh, YouTube uh, movies or uh, uh, music, and uh, it's it's growing and uh, I think we don't we really don't realize that the, the, the how big is this problem uh, what uh, what is the impact of uh, uh, internet and uh, advertising on our children they are watching all the time we cannot protect them uh, every single moment and uh, this is why we need a strong regulation and we don't have it this is indeed a revision of an existing directive. So what changes, what specific changes would you like to see in the revision that would make this a stronger directive in achieving what you've laid out as your goal? I don't want to see a self-regulation. So the member states should decide. I want to see a strong one uh, on the level, uh, on the European level. Uh, so... Uh, it will be a ban or uh, between some hours that are very um, when children are watching TV or uh, because now uh, it's depending on member states and uh, I think the publicity and the um, uh, budget is very very high so the fight is not balanced. You said mentioning you know, times in which people are viewing, but you've also said that a lot of this is social media, people choosing. You know, a lot of this is, hasn't got anything to do with actual time limits at the moment. People may, if people are watching a YouTube video, they can be watching it from any time. This is uh, why we support a ban. Uh, but uh, now we don't have, in my opinion, we have almost nothing. So... Uh, uh, leaving uh, the decision on member states and on companies, and it, it's wrong. This is wh why I supported uh, uh, a ban, and this is why I think European Parliament should ask for more. Dr. Joe Cranwell, you're an assistant professor in public health based in the UK. You've carried out research into advertising or promotion beyond the conventional media. What did you find? Well, what we found was that, that uh, particularly for YouTube music videos, that, that there's quite a high prevalence of alcohol content just in general. Um, but what we also found was that in around about 7% of the videos, there was actual product placement. Um, it seems like quite a small amount, 7%, but when you think about the types of artists that um, have the product placement in the videos, they're pretty much global artists. So you have artists like Robin Thicke, uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, uh, Pitbull. So these are global, generally American artists that have a very wide global reach. You also mentioned uh, computer games. I, I don't play computer games, but uh, this, they are all obviously targeted at young people and also older people as well, I believe. But there's promotional activities there as well. Well, the computer games actually that we've looked at weren't particularly targeted at a youth audience, but what we found was that a youth audience are playing the games. So if we take Grand Theft Auto, for example, that's very, very popular with the 11 to 17 year olds, um, but it's not targeted at them. There's lots of drinking, uh, lots of alcohol content, um, lots of branding, but the branding, um, the branding's all fake, so there's no actual kind of commercial agreement between um, alcohol companies 
um, um, you know, and the developers. Um, they are fake brands, but there's kind of lots of similarities between the brands and then products um, that we can see out on the shelves. But yes, yeah, certainly a high proportion of kids are playing 18 rated games. Have you looked at other social media, Twitter, Facebook, and advertising on those mediums? Um, we haven't, uh, obviously in the course of my research I've uh, come across um, evidence that suggests, particularly for social media sites, that, um, uh, that alcohol marketing is kind of really quite below the line and um, that the alcohol companies are kind of focusing more on social communication rather than direct selling to, um, to, to um, I'm not saying it's necessarily a youth audience, but a lot of people that are using social media sites um, are young people. You're not a policy person, but no. <laughs> can you see any recommendations emerging from what you've discovered in your research? Yeah, well, certainly we would like the uh, BBFC, that's the British Board of Film Classification, to um, include alcohol marketing in their age rating criteria. So they've been working with Google and with Sony Entertainment in the UK to place age ratings on music videos, um, and they have a set criteria for that. Um, unfortunately, we don't think that they're necessarily taking alcohol content, not just advertising, but general promotion of alcohol um, and promoting alcohol in a very positive sense, that they're particularly, not particularly taken that seriously. So we'd definitely like to see more action there. And in terms of the computer games, um, they're already age rated, but kids are still playing them. Uh, so what we would like, we'd like the, um, the PEGI system, so that's the Pan-European Games Information System, to include alcohol descriptors on their packaging. Um, and on their website so that parents um, are uh, at least aware of the type of content that's available. Is self-regulation working when it comes to marketing of alcohol, high-fat products, salt, alcohol, you name it? Manifestly not. Um, particularly because uh, advertising on television and in media seems to indicate that both alcohol and high-fat or high-sugar foods are associated with a healthy and enjoyable lifestyle, which is really irritating. <laughs> you see um, athletic people pushing their bicycles up mountains and then reaching for a very sugary drink to rehydrate when water is actually fine. You don't need the sugar inside it. And that's, that's disturbing. We have uh, increasing obesity in childhood particularly with lack of exercise as well as poor food choices. And this, is, this will provide an avalanche of diabetes and cardiovascular disease in the future. Manufacturers, for example, Soft Drinks Europe say, well, we've cut down the sugar, we're making tremendous efforts on our side. Are they doing enough? No, they're not doing enough, and we can see that from the outcome results. If they were doing more, the weight of children would be getting less. We've been monitoring weight in primary school children now for some years, measuring them when they come into school and as they leave at 11 to go on to secondary school. And the rate of obesity is increasing year on year on year. Health is not only important but expensive. At the moment, cardiovascular disease and diabetes take up a huge proportion of every health budget within the EU, not just in the UK. And this is going to increase as time goes by. We can't afford an unhealthy population. We have to get people fitter and eating um, better choice foods. And that means regulating the manufacturers' advertising products.